Travel Around Kazakhstan is an educational program on domestic tourism produced within the framework of Rouhani Jangiru project. Every episode, our camera crew travels along popular routes marked on a tourist vacation map of the Republic. For some, Algiers associates with a distant North African country covered with desert. For others, it is a territory of suffering, where authorities kept women and children in cold and hunger for a long time. Their offense was being family members of repressed husbands and fathers. It is a dark chapter in the history of our people, which residents and foreign tourists interested in. We have arrived at Museum Memorial Complex devoted to Akmal internment camp for wives of betrayers of the homeland. Hello, my name is Shinbolad Pazil, and this is Travel Around Kazakhstan. Algiers, the museum and memorial site in remembrance of victims of political repressions and totalitarianism, opened 31st of May 2007 on the initiative of the President of Kazakhstan, Nursultan Nazarbayev. It's situated in Akmal village on the spot of a previous labor settlement, the 26th location. The opening of the museum held in conjunction with 70th anniversary of the beginning of large-scale political repressions in the USSR. Two floors are in the museum building. First one is called Alash, on the history of Kazakhstan. The second one is Algier, devoted to the history of female detainees. You see a sculpture in front of you. The flower of life splits through the rock. It symbolically means that life goes on despite all woes and horrors. The freedom and captivity composition above represents a snare, where 15 doves beat their wings and hope to fly free. Algier was a part of the Karanganda camp, which in turn include Gulag, the main administration of camps and places of detention. The Gulag official statistics have been classified until the late 1980s, so researchers collected information bit by bit. Later, when archives opened, it emerged that 2.5 million people were simultaneously held in the prison and colony system from 1930 to 1956. During Stalin's time, the system denied the presumption of innocence. A person is guilty and should confess in everything, otherwise tortured. You see two rows of photos. One is before, and another is at the time of an arrest. It is the same people which you cannot recognize. To explain what Karlag was, picture a vast area of about 60,000 square kilometers. It was larger than Holland, Estonia, or Croatia. The length of Karlag was 300 kilometers from north to south, from east to west, around 200. They deported all locals in 1931, so the camp staff, their family, and prisoners lived here. Here, in an entry from the 486th Operational Order of NKVD, People's Commissariat for Internal Affairs of the USSR, initiate repression of wives and homeland traitors, members of the right Trotskyist, espionage and sabotage organizations, convicted by military chamber and tribunals on the first and second categories from 1 August 1936. 
People's Commissioner for Internal Affairs, Yezhov, signed this document. In 1940, he was executed after accusations of plotting an anti-Soviet coup. In 1931, the 26th resettlement created on the place of future Algier for migrants deported from the Saratov region. Prisoners from the other parts of the USSR were brought from here later. In 1938, during the height of Stalin's repressions, the camp had approximately 8,000 imprisoned women, including 4,500 family members of traitors of the fatherland. For many youngsters, the encampment became a place where they saw the light. In first years, it received about 2,000 women, which 600 of them were pregnant. The prisoner remembers, steam engine brings a few uncoupled wagons from Echelon on a narrow road and steps. It was hard to look at plain covered in glistening snow through bared windows because of bright sun. The strong thrust of locomotive and arrival of guards accompanied by a large number of dogs told us that it was the end of our long journey. The two familiar procedures started again clanging of unlocked wagon doors and calling of all of us. Women were taken from their homes by deception. The NKVD officers came at night and promised a meeting with their husbands. Wives believed them, wore the most beautiful dresses and gathered children. However, cars named Black Ravens waited for them at the exit of the apartment. Officers sent women on cars to prisons, where they waited for sentencing up to three to six months. For homeland traders' relatives, authorities establish a specific punishment, imprisonment or exile to distant territories of Siberia from five to ten years. Do you know how long detainees had to survive these places, despite the harsh weather of Akmola region and poor conditions of barracks life? It was an act of courage. Detention conditions in Algiers did not differ from Karlag. At first, a so-called special campground unite regime existed. Initial transfer to the camp started in January 1938. New arrivals built their barracks during a blizzard, storm, heat, and rain. Instead of mattresses, women threw straw on wooden flooring. For heating, they mowed reeds, which was a principal fuel in two winters. However, it gave so little warmth that temperature in huts did not exceed 6 to 8 degrees. They scarcely fed. Usual meals consisted of a slice of rye bread, one ladle of skilly, and a few spoons of batter porridge on water. After winter came a short spring, a summer with 40 degree heat and clouds of bugs, as well as wind, wind and wind. Legend has it, a Jana Jol village was nearby the campsite. Its people came to the gate and threw stones at prisoners. Lady tripped and smelled milk when she ran from them. When she brought pebbles in secret, Kazakh woman explained to her it was curd, the national Kazakh food. Jana Jol residents wanted to save inmates from starvation, for which those were thankful. What is curd? It is a homemade cottage cheese. Who were detainees of Alger? Mainly, they were spouses of state, political and social figures, sister of Tukhachevsky, Marshal, as well as partners of outstanding Kazakh leaders such as Sifulin, Mylin, Ruskulov, Kozhanov, Jurgenov, Nurmakov, Asfendiyarov, and many others are among them.
Here is a little story that leaves unhealed scars after reading. Actress Lydia Fenkel arrived at Algiers in a coke soaked in Chanel No. 5 perfume. Much later, this episode goes into film Moscow Saga, based on the book of Vasily Aksenov. He and his parents were victims of Stalin tyranny. People got arrested under the 58th article, which had 14 paragraphs for shooting execution. They accused people in espionage as politically undesirable persons. Firstly, they persecuted state figures and Alash party members, including the first prime minister of Kazakhstan, Alihan Bokyakhanov, academic Akhmet Baitursinov, and the first Kazakhstani engineer, Mukadmirjan Tinishpaev. The wife of shot Belarusian poet Todor Klashoni arrived in Algier camp with four-month girl Maya. Maya slept in a residential institution near Rita, Tura Ruskolov's daughter. She later remembered that they checked each other if both of them were alive. We have a thousand stories like hers. Female detainees jokingly called this part of camp an exotic island because there were women of 62 nationalities. A list of these women include mostly Russians, then Jews, Ukrainians, Germans, Polish, 87 Kazakhs, 4 French, and even 1 Japanese. In May 1939, when the operation against spouses of fatherland traitors has ended, detainment of prisoners and juveniles changed from special to general camp regime. It meant a lot, including that females allowed to have a postal correspondence. Then many of them found out about the fate of their husbands and kids. For them was no hope to see their family. Kids up to three years held on the camp area, in a separate barracks called kindergarten. Nannies from convicts looked after them. Mothers could visit their infants after work, but as the child was three years old, they had taken to an orphanage without any exceptions. Babies which were older than three sent as soon as possible during the arrest. Women were afraid to get into the prosecutor's office because of torture and abuse. Interrogations tend to go at nights, and prisoners were not allowed to sleep at noon. They sat women on a high chair so that legs did not reach the floor. She spent quite a lot of time in such a position. Investigators changed, and the female was the same. In addition to intolerable living conditions, innocent women worked hard. They did it so well that Algier camp became a profitable multi-diverse farm and topped all car-like branches on production capacities. These women created in the Kazakh steppe a complex of enterprises which provided the front with special uniform during the Great Patriotic War. From the memoirs of Maria Mansis, we started to organize ourselves in such challenging moral conditions with extreme caution. We face a principal task, to obtain the association of a range of productions from the camp management to put all 6.5 thousand women to work. After a while, a group of ceramic engineers found that organization of brick production was possible and real. They revealed the presence of necessary raw materials, calculated the opening of the brick factory. This is a quick example of the commitment of women in Algier work camp. They developed production on the ground, manually dug irrigation channels, vegetable gardens, fruit and berry fields. They built a garment workshop, 
and a cattle farm. The administration sent all female manufactured goods to other camps or front line in the Great Patriotic War. Agriculture occupied a significant place in life of women prisoners. The work on seed selection carried out in camp. They initiated backyard gardening and constantly did reclamation work. A small power station was built. People allotted lands for gourd cultures, where melons and watermelons grew. Females engaged in gardening as well, cultivated apples, pears, plums, and cherries. Flowers grew in greenhouses. Convicts planted some poplars among huts. They assigned women to works on livestock and poultry development. They constructed farms for cows, young animals, harcheries, and veterinary facilities. Everything the Algier grew meant for Karlag, as the mortality rate was very high there. From 1940 to 1950s, 10,000 detainees died in there. Probably, the labor of these women saved many male prisoners of Karanganda camp. Some female detainees who were representatives of artistic professions launched clubs. Researchers know the Algier camp had a choir and a dancing club, as well as a theater studio. Captives remember that they put on high-quality plays on holidays. It was uneasy to come here and teach women art after a day full of hard physical labor. For Algier internees, the situation had not improved until six years after the end of the Great Patriotic War in 1951, although not for everyone. On 24 April 1951, pregnant and mothers with children were freed. The work camp closed soon in 1953. However, lots of females had no right to come back to a previous place of residence until the rehabilitation in 1958. Coercive apparatus did not stop after the release of people. The truth is, that passport of girls had a specific stamp, which banned them from arriving to large cities. Many of them stayed in Kazakhstan, after all. Such mark had not allowed them to find a decent employment. Children of ex algier hostages were outcasts for a long time. It was impossible for them to enter the university find a normal job, having a status of a daughter or son of people's enemy. After the rehabilitation, they were able to return their names. Looking at these photos of people who went through Algier encampment, you understand that this machine did not spare anyone. Here is Rachel Misiru Plisetskaya, mother of the famous ballerina. After the reservation closing, people from all over the USSR came here to bring back wilderness. Originally, human remains. Old inmates who stayed here told that an encampment called the Hell on Earth located in here. Today, Akmol is a modern village, good homes constructed here. Youngsters run around the streets, and they have internet connection. Looking at all of this, it is hard to imagine the horrors taking place in correctional camps. This place should be introduced to tours and citizens of Kazakhstan, so that terrors never happen again. The land, which had Akmo labor camp for wives of traders of the motherland, will remember all atro cities of Stalin terror. Thousands and thousands of names set in endless black granite slabs will remind these tourists. Each title has a tragedy behind it. We hope that similar will never repeat here. This was Shimbala Pazil, who travel around Kazakhstan.